Hey folks, I'm Owl, this is Yarn Owl Reads, and today is going to be my August wrap-up and September plans for 2018. I'm not feeling up to doing a full wrap-up. Uh, I read 14 things this last month, and so here's just some of the important ones, some of the highlights. I read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I actually didn't think I was gonna like this because I've been feeling I've been having a lot of trouble with dystopians lately, I just haven't been feeling up to them. But and I started reading this in April and I had to stop for a while, I had to take a little break from it and then I started again right at the beginning of August and I finished like two days later. The audiobook is fantastic. Once I got into the story, once I sort of understood what was going on and really cared about the characters, I am so excited for the sequel. I am so impatient for the sequel. It um, ends, like if you don't like cliffhangers, maybe wait until the next one's almost out. I gave it four and a half out of five stars and I'm looking forward to my next reread. I also read The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness and I really liked it. I gave it, I also gave it a four and a half out of five stars um, and I bring it up now because I think a lot of people who are friends with me are also fans of Buffy and I very much felt like this was uh, sort of, it, it was almost a contemporary story set on the backdrop of season three of Buffy. So if you're a fan of that, I highly suggest that book. I finished this set of the Sunstone series, so I read volumes four and five, which is what makes up book two. Um, and I loved them. I highly recommend them if you're looking for a queer BDSM graphic novel that's just adorable and the second set of that I read um, was a little bit harder. It did have a little bit more of a, like real issues in it as opposed to just like cute fluffy romance um, but I really liked how it went so I highly recommend you read that entire set. Volumes one through five are one story so check that out. I reread the last two Magnus Chase books, so that's Hammer of Thor and Ship of the Dead, and I gave them both five stars, I think. Uh, Hammer of Thor 4.5 and Ship of the Dead 5. All right, well, I gave them very high ratings, and yeah, just in case anybody was at all wondering, Alex Fierro still owns my heart. <laughs> I finally finished Rune of Stars by Lindsay Miller. This is the second book in the Mask of Shadows duology. Um, Mask of Shadows right here. Place of honor on my queer books shelf. It was so good. I am going to post a full reading vlog of that at some point when I finish editing it, um, but it was very good. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, just if, if you're looking for a good, like, sort of fantasy adventure quest, with assassins and morally gray characters and some magic and a uh, gender fluid main character. Like that's, that is this series all wrapped up for you. Please read it. I also read, I uh, reread, so I read this once in high school. I read this many times in high school, let's be fair. But I reread Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And I liked it a lot better than I thought I would. I gave it three stars and I was expecting to give it like a one. Um, it was a really fun, nostalgic, silly read. Like, Obviously there's like unhealthy relationship dynamics and some possessive behaviors and it's like toxic masculinity up the wall. There's lots of toxic, toxic masculinity, but I was able to, or, like that didn't make me hate the book. I was like, oh, yep, nope, that's crummy, but this is still fun to read. Um, I will note that since then, since September has started, I have read New Moon and Half of Eclipse and oh boy, I am not liking those. I can't deal with like all of the crap that is being written in those. Um, it's really just uh, lots and lots of ableism and other issues, but that's a really big one. I'll talk about that later. All of the other books that I read in August were for class and at some point I think I'm gonna do a blog post sort of like uh, Destiny over at Howling Libraries did a blog post about her assigned readings. I think I'm gonna end up doing that at some point um, but in case you're interested they were uh, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman 4.5 out, out of 5 stars. Uh, the Crossover by Kwame Alexander 4 out of 5 stars. Bone Gap by Laura Ruby, 4.5 stars. We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, 4 stars. And Last Stop on Market Street by Matt De La Pena, 4.5 out of 5 stars. So those are my class reads so far. 
you may notice I'm not putting the covers up for this video. I might not do that for a little while. I am in grad school again. I am stressed. I have very little time. So the editing on these is probably going to be not quite as nice as the editing has been to this point. I still want to make the videos even if I can't put that level of time and energy into them. So this is also why you're getting uh, an abbreviated wrap up and sort of a plan all in one video. All right, so that was my August as far as my plan went. I did finish Children of Blood and Bone. I didn't read Dread Nation. I did my class readings. Yay! I finished Rune of Stars and I didn't finish Strangers on the Phone. Um, if you're interested in what that is, check out my plan video from the beginning of October. Nope. I keep saying October. I mean August. Check out my plan video from the beginning of August that I released in the middle of August. It's a Klexa fan fiction that was published. The author is somebody I know from being on the internet and reading a lot of Klexa fan fiction. And so she sent me a arc of her published book and it's, I got about halfway, I don't know, I read some of it. It was a fun before bedtime read and then I started reading other fan fiction before bed. So that's where that ended up. That's where we are for now. If I ever do finish it, I will mention it on here. All right, and then as far as plans go for September, I am mostly reading things for class. There are a couple things that I have that aren't for class. I can't, I'm not gonna guarantee that I'm gonna read these, but I have them in case I need something other than that. Um, I have Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Stanislaw Lem, I think is how you say that. Um, this is the S'more Sci-Fi book of the month. Um, it's short, it's sci-fi, and I've been feeling in a super, I've been feeling in a very sci-fi mood and a very sort of a spooky mood, because in my brain it is now fallen, therefore I want to read spooky things. It seems spooky, it's sci-fi-y, and I really like listening to those podcasts, so I might get to that. My library also does this really cool program where they do their own book box of the month. Um, so there's a program, it's a reader's advisory program, where you can get a book of the month picked for you by the acquisitions library and just based on your tastes. The acquisitions acquisitions librarian also happens to be a really good friend of mine and so like she's giving me a book recommendation every month but they come in these boxes that have little goodies in them all surrounded a theme like this month's theme was the it's honeybee month apparently um, and so we got a bookmark that looks like a honeybee um, and like honey sticks and a tea and yeah and my book for this month was the Stars Now Unclaimed by Drew Williams. I just picked this up and I haven't read anything about it and I don't think I'm going to because all I really need is this blurb on the cover which says, come for the exploding spaceships, stay for the intriguing universe. Becky Chambers, author of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I still haven't gotten to Closed in Common Orbit yet and I'm actually saving most of my sci-fi, especially the sci-fi that I know is queer, for something special that y'all will hear about hopefully soon. I may be planning a thing keep an eye on my social media for more. But anyway, The Stars Now Unclaimed just, it, it's, it is long. So I don't know if I'm gonna get through it this month with all the other things I have to do, but I'm excited about it nonetheless. I'm really hoping I'll get through it. I'm also reading all the school books and now that I actually have my class list, I can tell you more about the school books I'm gonna be reading. So the next two weeks are all picture books and uh, we're focusing on illustrators. So I am reading books by John Klassen. Uh, I think it's pronounced Rick Raskja. I'm going to look all of that up if I discuss it in my wrap up. And Sophie Blackall. So those are authors that I think two of them I'm comparing and contrasting them and one of them I'm just doing an in-depth author analysis. So um, yeah, that's what I'm doing for the next couple of weeks. And then let's look at the rest of my schedule for September. Nope, oh, nope, and then we're into October. There we go. Apparently all my class readings for September are picture books. Well, that's exciting and lovely. Cool. Okay, so that's what I'm reading. I'm probably not gonna read a whole lot outside of class books and the two I showed you, the two sci-fi. Um, one, because I am saving my queer sci-fi for a special event. Um, and then two, I have been feeling a lot of fan fiction lately. So audiobooks get me through. Um, audiobooks are a total lifesaver for me. I'm not sure what I would do without them. I know I would read significantly less. This last month, um, 
Let's see, what are my stats? Of the 14 books I read, 10 of them were audiobooks, two of them were graphic novels, and one was a picture book. Perfect. That does not add up to 14. What's the other one? Oh, and one was an e-arc. So everything that I could listen to on audiobooks, like three were totally graphic based, I couldn't listen to the audiobook. One was an e-arc, I couldn't have the audiobook. Everything else I read last month was on audiobook. And I actually discovered audiobooks through fanfiction. So on Archive of Our Own, you can search for Podfix, and there is a whole community of people that records fanfictions and puts them up on Archive of Our Own or Tumblr or fanfiction.net or wherever you find your fanfiction. I don't actually know that fanfiction.net has it, to be fair, because I haven't used that site. But um, I have a couple of like old favorites that I just absolutely adore. Um, and so right now I'm listening to one of those and it's like just the series by itself, not including all the spinoffs the author did. I think is like 12 to 15 hours, 18 hours, something like that. It's a lot of hours and that's making me feel good right now. So I think I might just be listening to fan fiction. So at the end of the month, you might get a class wrap up and a fan fiction wrap up. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's all I've got for you right now. If you want to find me on other social media, I am on uh, Goodreads, Instagram, Twitter, and WordPress, all as Yarnell Reads. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to put them. And other than that, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye!